Hershey Park in, well, Hershey, Pennsylvania. This is Clay with the Pennsylvania Roller Coaster Club, and today we're going to take you on a quick journey of the roller coasters of Hershey Park, and we're going to rate them from worst to first. Now, before we take a look at the credits, as we like to do, we like to take a look at the park itself. And Hershey Park was founded all the way back in 1906 by Milton S. Hershey, the founder of the Hershey Chocolate Company. Now, originally, Milton had built the park with the intentions of giving his employees and their families a place to be able to uh, enjoy themselves when they weren't necessarily working their shift at the plant. And moving up over the next 10 to 15 years, eventually they would get their first roller coaster and in the 70s build their very first steel roller coaster and first looping roller coaster in Super Duper Looper. Uh, in the 80s, they would go on a mad dash to expand, and that has really never stopped. So, as of today, and the recording of this, towards the end of 2023, Hershey Park has found itself to be one of the largest theme parks in the entire country, and actually is the largest theme park in the entire country, that is located outside the states of California, Florida, or Ohio. Um, that puts it in pretty rare company, especially considering the other massive parks that are located in the U.S. outside of those states. So, to get us started off, number 15, Breaker's Edge. Now, I know what you're thinking, and yes, I do agree that if bacon tasted like pencils and pencils tasted like bacon, then it really wouldn't even make sense for us to have both of them. But that that's the second thing that I was thinking. The, the first thing that I was thinking was we should probably, just as a courtesy, include these. Even though they don't count as a real credit, we, we should still include these. Because, um, yeah, I mean, they're everywhere now. For the people that have a water park, it seems like every single park is eventually going to have one of these uh, these water coasters. So, figured we'd include it as a bonus. Number 14, Coco Cruiser. With construction beginning in late 2013, this Zamperla Kitty Coaster would open with the park on opening day, May 10th, 2014. And this ride, you know, although probably what you would expect, this ride is, is in many parks throughout the country uh, with the same layout. Um, and roughly, it is about the same experience as you would probably assume. But it serves its purpose like it does in many other parks as a great starter. Number 13, Wild Mouse. Now, I know you've heard me say it a bunch, but if you've ridden one Wild Mouse, you've essentially ridden them all. Now, the layouts are so similar from manufacturer to manufacturer, um, it really ends up boiling down to uh, maintenance and, and how hard they hit trims. Uh, th this, in particular, uh, installation is, is pretty good, actually. I, I, I don't mind uh, this one at all. Uh, Mock Rise has always made uh, my favorite of the mice. Moving on, number 12, Trailblazer. So, Aero Mine Trains. Yeah, everybody has one, and if you didn't have one, you probably had a, a Vacoma or something very similar. Um, I mean, realistically, this is not a terrible mine train, but I wouldn't also call it a particularly good one either. Um, to me, it just kind of lacks on the the uh, the excitement. Uh, this is a, a little bit of a dull mine train for my liking, but at least it's kind of smooth. Moving on, number eleven, laugh track. Now, laugh track. Uh, this always seems to have by far the longest 
line in the park every day that I've ever been here. Um, and I'm saying that in the manner in which I'm saying it, not because I don't think it's a great ride, because it is, it's a lot of fun. Uh, but for a cloned ride indoors, um, it just drives me nuts how crazily packed this ride is constantly. Now I will say, on a hot summer day, getting out of the sun and getting into a little bit of air conditioning, hugely beneficial. Number 10, Jolly Rancher Remix. Uh, speaking of cloned rides, I will say, as far as the coma boomerangs go, uh, this is by far my favorite. Um, Jolly Rancher Remix does a whole bunch of things right. So, not only did they make the ride experience better um, with uh, upgraded trains and doing extensive track work, but the experience overall is better due to the phenomenal soundtracks that they have constantly playing. Um, sometimes seasonal music, sometimes uh, dance music, uh, a little bit of a uh, little bit of everything. Really, it, it all depends on the time of year that you're there. Number nine, Super Duper Looper. This ride screams vintage classic. Now, although a few modifications have been made over the years, uh, the ride still, for the most part, has been left untouched. And for that, I know I am incredibly appreciative. Uh, this has a tremendous amount of history to it. Uh, this is the first looping coaster in the park, the first steel coaster in the park, and one of the first looping coasters uh, in the world uh, when it had come out. So super duper looper, really exquisite. Still riding well to this day. Big fan. Moving on. Number eight, Comet. Now, I don't want to be too harsh when I say this, but I do want to be honest and very, very clear. Hershey Park screwed up here. So, let me explain. I'm not certain that Comet will be able to hold on to this number 8 rank. I actually fear that for next year, Comet could drop several spots. Um, and the reason being is the mistake that Hershey Park made for this offseason by purchasing new trains for the ride that will get rid of the buzz bar restraint and now incorporate the new style of PTC train restraint. Not a fan. Not a fan at all. Moving on. Number seven. Great Bear. Now, in terms of B&M inverts, this probably has to be considered the most unique layout, at least in the United States. Um, that probably is too bold of a statement if you're going to incorporate international installations. Um, you know, Alton Tower comes to mind. Um, with, uh, with Nemesis, uh, that is also a pretty unique layout, but here in the States, this probably could be the, uh, the creme de la creme as far as, uh, unique oddity. Uh, super fun. I really love going into that Helix as your first drop, um, and some of the low to the ground and low to the water elements to finish off the ride are pretty cool too. Um, but moving on, number six, Lightning Racer. Now, some of you may be surprised that I have this ride ranked so highly, um, but then again, some of you may not. It really is a solid, solid ride, and when you incorporate the racing aspect, which I believe, by law, has to give every coaster additional bonus points, I, I think that was like written in the Bible somewhere, or I don't know, somebody said it, that. we'll figure it out later, but... Lightning Racer is a pretty cool ride, guys. Not the best GCI that you're gonna ride, but definitely not one of the worst. Um, this really is still running well, even after all these years, and after a little bit of retracking work, it, it seems to be doing even better. But number five, Fahrenheit. Now, Fahrenheit, guys, uh, this is one of the first rides that we had featured on the Underrated series. 
and for very good reason. This is kind of like the love affair of uh, Intamin and Gerslauer. This is really Intamin's best ditch effort uh, at creating a Eurofighter type model. And um, newsflash, this is way better than any Gerslauer Eurofighter you'll ever ride. Um, probably not going to surprise many people to hear that, but this is insanely good. Uh, some great elements, definitely make a trip to get on it. Number four, Candemonium. Now, as far as B&M Hypers go, this is one of those rides that you seldom hear mentioned when people discuss best B&M Hyper. There are a lot of people that will vote for um, uh, Diamondback, there are a lot of people that will vote for the Goliath down at Six Flags over Georgia. Uh, a lot of people will vote for Mako down in Florida. Um, but not many people will bring up candy. Um, as a matter of fact, I hear a lot of people talk about it being a lower end B&M hyper. Except for maybe a rare few people that give it the credit that it is uh, so rightfully deserved. But if you have not ridden candy in the last couple years, um, I would encourage you to go and, and give it another try because uh, this provides a much better ride experience than a lot of people probably remember. Moving on, number three, Skybrush. Yes, Thigh Crush has finally made its presence felt. Well, presence felt unlike the thighs, which it, you immediately feel. It, that's why they call it, 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 it right. Super awesome. I don't care about a little bit of thigh pain. This ride is worth every single bit of it. Um, it's not so intense or, or uncomfortable that um, you're going to you know, be left severely bruised in black and blue the next day. Um, but I wouldn't marathon it. Um, unless you're willing to be a little uncomfortable the next day. Uh, but even then, I, I would do it if you have an opportunity to. Uh, it really is an amazing, uh, amazing ride. And one of the best first drops uh, ever on a roller coaster. Um, I kind of equate it a little bit to Maverick. Uh, very similar with the ideology of how that first drop was designed. So moving on. Number two, Storm Run. Now, if you are a fan of Intamin Accelerator Coasters, which I am, then you got to get on Storm Runner, which I have. And that's why I have it ranked number two. And uh, later in the month of December, once we get closer to New Year's and we put out our top 100 list, we will see how high... Uh, some of these rides local here in Pennsylvania, especially in Hershey Park, can climb that list. Uh, this is, in my opinion, the best launch out of the uh, Intamin Accelerator Coasters, not just because of the intensity, but because of the shortness of the launch before you start climbing that spike. And the extended layout really is what makes this the best accelerator coaster in the world. Um, wow, so good. But number one, Wildcats Revenge. Now, this is really, really good. So much better than even I could have hoped for. And I say that very guardedly uh, now after the fact, but I will be transparent. When this ride got announced, I said, oh, this is going to be a middle of the pack bottom of the barrel RMC at best and um, I had even told myself going to ride it for the first time if I was really excited and wanted to ride it for a second time regardless of how great or elite it may be if it just put a smile on my face and and had me excited to want to go and get in line for a second time I set the bar relatively low um, after we had ridden for the first time, not only were we excited to ride it again, um, we could not wait 
to keep riding it and keep riding it and wait in line really as many times as, as it took to be able to get you know five or six rides for that first weekend uh, that it was open for multiple rides to the general public. Um, it has such high level pacing, such great use and rapid fire succession in which the elements are thrown at you. And the stall in which the way they do it, it, it it's just done so well. And the timing of each element is done so well. It is not only the best coaster at Hershey Park, but possibly one of the best in the country. So if you've enjoyed our takes, um, please comment below. Let us know. Let us know what you agree with. And let me know what you don't agree with. Uh, do you believe that Wildcat's Revenge is now the best roller coaster in the park? Do you think it's Sky Rush? Or do you think maybe it's Storm Runner? Or are you an enormous B&M fan? You love yourself a good hyper. And you still like Candemonium the best. Let us know below, guys. And we'll see you next time.